the Joe Rogan experience. That was the thing about the uh, rock and roll movement in Laurel Canyon in the 1970s. Eddie Bravo made me read a book on it. Yeah, oh, wait, the 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 Laurel, I watched the documentary. I think. Yeah, but. there's there's like a crazy fucking conspiracy that the CIA created like Jim Morrison, the doors and oh. the rock and roll movement of the sixties, all the decadent rock and roll. Yeah. And it's, it's there's weird connections. It's like, you gotta go like, Whoa, this is a, you gotta go there deep. are some connections there. Here's the thing. I don't think you can create a Jim Morrison. Mm -mm. You need to have a guy who's that guy. But Jim Morrison's dad was a, like a federal agent. Jim Morrison's dad was, what was Jim Morrison's dad? A general. It was, was a general. A general? <clears throat> but you gotta have Wasn't that. he in the CIA as well? I, I don't think so. No? Just a general? <laughs> so, he was like the one that gave the orders that started the Gulf of Tonkin or something. Oh, like that. Jesus Christ. Whoa. Okay, so imagine that. So his dad, deep state, right? So that's Military a connection. Military connection. Okay. okay. Rear Admiral. Yeah, look at that. Rear Admiral. It's not what I expected his dad okay. to look like. So he's not a general. That, so he's heavy duty military man. And then his son goes on and becomes one of the biggest rock and roll stars of all time and like a complete counterculture figure drugs and chaos and pulling his dick out in front of people right madness driving fire. a 67 gt 500 mustang in the desert and fucking hair and sunglasses yeah. and and there's people that think that that sort of image this the rock and roll star the decadent depraved rock and roll mm -hmm. star image was calculated by the CIA and that this was all part of the same uh, anti-war movement like what they were trying to do is stop the anti-war movement they were mm -hmm. trying to stop the hippie movement and they think that what they did was encourage a chaos that came out of worshiping these degenerate rock and roll stars they're all drug addicts and saying crazy shit right but as it like you're taking away his talent. And no, but you're not though. You're not. They're saying you're, they, you're essentially saying that they promoted that. Like promoted the talent it. already existed, but they realized if you can get this crazy chaotic guy, sign him to a major record label, and then push him everywhere, and have these young kids see this guy worship you know, this like, guy with yeah. these sayings, worship these this weird poems. The, the Lizard King, right? This fucking wild dude that you know, like Val Kilmer played in that movie. If Excellent. you watch that, yeah, Val Kilmer like Excellent. thought he was Jim Morrison. He lost his fucking marbles. I it's a great that. movie. Yeah. He seemed like Jim Morrison in that movie. But that like the this this documentary, this book is all about that the CIA had a hand in this. This is uh, a different <clears throat> I think a different I don't know exactly what they said he did in it, but this is an explanation of what happened. The details of the incident were distorted perhaps intentionally between Morrison and the other commanders on the scene, the Pentagon and the White House. That night President Johnson interrupted primetime TV, a very big deal in those days, and told the American public that two US Navy warships had been attacked on the high seas and he was asking Congress for support to counter the North Vietnamese aggression. At the same time, Morrison and his staff told Navy headquarters in Hawaii that the radar returns the, destroy the destroyers had targeted were probably false returns generated by the rough seas. Headquarters relayed the information to the Secretary of Defense, Robert McNamara, but he failed to give those details to President Johnson. So he held the details back. Wow. So based on Johnson's testimony that the destroyers had suffered an unprovoked attack in international waters, Congress approved of the Gulf of Tonkin resolution, giving the president the authority to conduct military operations in Southeast Asia without a declaration of war. So that was Morrison's dad was a part of that. Wow. So the thing is, it sounds super far-fetched, but when you look at what they definitely did with the Manson family, what they definitely did with Operation MK Ultra and Operation Midnight Climax and all these different crazy mind control experiments that they mm -hmm. did and what they did with the Harvard LSD studies and what they did with the they were dosing people with acid and trying to yeah. make them do things and trying to turn them into psychopaths and they did it with the Manson family. They they got Manson when he was in prison and dosed him up with acid, and ta allegedly, taught, allegedly. Him, taught him how to be a cult leader, allegedly, right. and then provided him with acid, and then pr repeatedly let him out of jail every time he got arrested for things. Yeah, because he was someone, arrested a lot. Yeah, and someone would step in and say, this is above your pay grade, and he would be out. Yeah, and they know that he worked with 
Jolly West, who was the guy who was running MK Ultra for the CIA. So if they were doing Dang. that, you think they're going to leave rock and roll alone? No, right, right, right. No, they probably would do it. And then there's also some people now that are saying they were a part of funding the gangster rap mo- movement of the 80s and the 90s. Yeah. That, that was another way to sow discord in society. And when society is unstable, you can, like, control people sure. more. Sure. When society is stable, then they want to go, hey, let's fucking get rid of some of these bureaucrats that are useless. Let's fucking clean up the streets. That's a stable society with yeah. a great economy. No, you want things in chaos. And so the, the, that's the way you stay in power and stay in control. Yeah. What was that? It was a movie or something silly where they would play in the, it was a music they were musicians, whatever. They had an album out. And in the album, they were putting something to, like, get people to buy certain things or do certain things. Oh, thing. subliminal it, messages. Yeah. But they used to I, do I that in movies. It, I forget what it was. but They would was, show, like, one frame that said, hungry, eat popcorn. <laughs> yeah. They would show, like, a photo. Was it a silly Will Ferrell movie? I can't. I, it's, oh, like, drive me crazy. Bill, uh, like, Ben Stiller. And so they, but it was getting people to do things. It was yeah. like, crazy. And I was like, that probably fucking happens. It like definitely you just, happens. Movies and Josie and the Pussycats. And the Pussycats. I know it was something stupid. Find but... themselves in the middle of a conspiracy to deliver subliminal messages through the popular music. <laughs> it, it was a girl so group silly. Find themselves in the middle of a conspiracy. Oh, uh, through so this that was the TV show. Oh no, this, oh, is, this is later. Later, it this was is a way movie. later. Yeah, Josie and the Pussycats was an actual animated show that right. was on when I was a kid. That's why I was thinking. So that's it was the movie silly. from two thousand one. Yeah. yeah, is that Will Ferrell? I don't know if he's in it. I just remember it being quirky. 